When do web design contracts do more harm than good? There's a general consensus that web design contracts with clients are a good thing. Unlike many other services, web designers depend on their customers' input to complete their work. Traditionally, web designers have submitted a contract along with a proposal of work. It sets out the end deliverable and the responsibilities either side. The incentive for the web designer is that it can prevent scope or feature creep, which which could leave them out of pocket. Agile project management challenged this. As the internet emerged, developers began to see that setting the scope of projects was often too restrictive. It led to the writing of the Manifesto for Agile Software Development in 2001, which set out four values to counter this. Although it started with software, the Agile philosophy has since expanded to other industries, governments, and public organizations to the point where it is now considered as the new norm. It's estimated that as of 2021, 86% of software development is being done using agile methodologies, and this continues to grow. The top reason cited for agile project management is that it can help manage changing priorities, accelerate software delivery, increase team productivity. Clearly, plenty of web developers and designers are used to agile working, but I think it's fair to say that most freelancers implementing solutions like WordPress are not. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. This is the third of four core agile values. And it's not saying here there should be no contracts. There would be every good reason to formally agree what time and skills are being offered to, say, a scrum team. Some projects are going to be collaborative to the point where there needs to be some form of profit sharing. It's saying only fix in advance what is sensible and collaborate with clients to avoid friction when one side needs to make changes. In my last video, I talked about data-driven design and UX, and although much of this could be set out as other as than tasks, there's a good chance that following the evidence would lead to changes that would become obvious to both parties. Certainly, Agile's iterative approach makes the most of the internet's unique ability to give us real-time feedback, but I think the philosophy is far reaching because there is a simple wisdom to the idea of taking baby steps and correcting as you go. I don't have a contract and I feel self-conscious saying this because there's quite an industry that's built up around selling contracted solutions to web designers. There are influencers who are quite adamant that it's unprofessional not to have one. What I have instead is some simple terms online that clients have to tick box agree before buying our services. I cover the two key points of my terms in my initial conversations with clients to make sure that we are right for each other. And the first thing is liabilities. I have no control over the website platform that I use or clients. So I make it clear that I'm bringing my knowledge and labor to their project. I'm not selling a website as an end deliverable. I will do my best to advise on things like accessibility, GDPR, and give expectations over choices of software. But much of this is open to change and opinion, so I can only attempt to give a balanced summary of my understanding. Also, with licensing, I'm keen that the client owns as much as they can, so we use open source software and royalty-free media. If they want the recommended updates and support on premium software, then they'll need to either stay on our hosting and care plan or purchase it themselves, and I give a rough estimate of this. I also cover the pros and cons of WordPress and the sponsor of this blog, which is Beaver Builder. I explain that we choose Beaver Builder because it was made with agencies in mind. It keeps the client UI relatively simple and stable, but developers are able to extend on it with very little risk of things breaking. Other things that are in a typical contract I don't want because they either limit the scope of a project or they will not mitigate personal risks to me. That doesn't mean that every job that I do in the future will not need a contract, but I just try to remove as many potential blocks as possible. If I do need a contract in the future, I'll probably aim to do this collaboratively as a way of strengthening strategy and working relationships. Getting paid. I first became 
aware of the concept of web design contracts through two thought leaders with very different ideas. The first was Andy Clark and his plain English open source contract called Contract Killer. Whether this or, for that matter, any contract would stand up legally is probably unknown. Either way, I didn't see it communicating what I wanted or representing the priorities of my clients. The second was Mike Montero and his F you pay me talk, which was done with his lawyer. I didn't really understand that long before I knew of Agile. My instinct was to give estimates and charge up front if there was any risk. I expected clients would want to make changes or there would be some other roadblocks. Why would I set up a system that risks me not getting paid, then hire a lawyer to start a relationship assuming no trust and bad faith in order to correct this? I didn't really have the will or the resources to play the my lawyer is bigger than yours game and anecdotally I kind of heard others say that the only clients who refuse to sign their web design contracts are lawyers but I think it's important to note here that both examples go back to a time before agile was dominant a time when the web was mostly hand-coded brochure sites contract killer talks of the relatively new CSS standards. In that context, it probably made much more sense to sell an end deliverable. I'm still not quite sure why more don't charge upfront for sprints of work, but I can certainly see situations where a commitment of resources is such that to start a project, you would need to know that it's going to earn above a certain amount. In some agile contracts, if the job is finished before the estimated number of sprints, then the difference is split. As Mike's talk f uh, is focused on the benefits of having a good lawyer, I'm imagining he would not be a big fan of off-the-shelf contracts. So I'm going to talk about that. There are a lot of ready-made premium contracts now. Let's imagine that we are new to web design with no need for agile project management. We've probably not heard of it. We're doing information or brochure sites. Our clients don't want any marketing strategy from us. They're leaving it with us to design. We've heard that we must have a contract, but the freebies out there seem too woolly and the clients aren't paying enough for a lawyer. We see a post by Joe. He's raving about how brilliant the new Acme client contract is. He feels it makes him more professional. His clients have no issue signing it. And best of all, it got him paid in full when an unreasonable client was refusing and it helped him weed out a problematic client early. Others who bought it recommend it too. It sounds great. But how do we know that this isn't all just confirmation bias? For example, clients have no issue signing. Could this be a warning that people are not genuinely committing to the agreement? They met and they trusted Joe. He didn't talk about the details of the contract because he felt that was off brand. They are busy, but they feel, as with most terms, that everyone must just sign this and it won't be a problem. The client who refused to pay, contracts have a tendency to justify their own existence. Let's imagine the client does the usual thing of asking for things that Joe sees as out of scope. Joe doesn't really know how to discuss this with him, but now he can point to his contract. Shocked that Joe has gone all legal on them, the client looks to retaliate similarly. Someone suggests that they might be able to get him one of his open source plugins isn't, another is collecting personal data, some templated elements seem to have retained some rights. There's probably something because Joe, like his clients, didn't get a lawyer in to check the legal situation of all his choices. In the end, though, the client decides this is just too much. They write it off rather than to have to do all of the research and spend the time going to court. The red flag client, this one has read the contract. It came as a surprise and the tone was not like the affable Joe that they have committed to working with. They're disappointed because it took them ages to settle on Joe, who they thought understood them. What they were actually worried about was their responsibility to deliver content. Like many clients, they don't know what was required of them. But not wanting to seem too foolish, they kind of focused on other things in the hope of removing the need for the contract. Joe, also surprised and now defensive, points out that the contract is for their benefit too. Now feeling patronized, the client is totally out. But Joe's peer group supports him, saying he just dodged a bullet. 
The Acme contract, like similar products, is usually for educational purposes only and comes without guarantees. In the right hands and circumstances, it could be a very useful cost and time saver. In the wrong hands, potentially a liability to a business. Whether you need a contract or don't, you're probably right. All rules are contextual. So it's probably wise for us to keep asking ourselves whether our contracts or our terms are still helping us to produce better work rather than restrict it, improve communication rather than strain relationships, mitigate risk rather than introduce them. Scope setting contracts, I think, are on the decline with the growth of agile projects. Whether that's right for individual freelancers or small agencies is going to depend on the client and the service offered. Personally, I'm moving away from selling websites as a commodity. I never actually did, but that was the perception. And towards providing a wider service that requires more agility, and it may even require more contracts. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you if you got to the end. I hope you have a good day and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.